this is in case you don't know. Um, uh, this is uh, Grant, Grant Stank Buster. What's his name? Stank Grant. Yeah, Grant Stank Feld. Um, he uh, he says, uh, I don't know if you know this. I've, I've heard this from many Republicans. Uh, real journalism in America is dead. Um, says the guy who supports the dude who calls everybody that isn't, I guess, RAV and RSBN and fucking Flashpoint fake news all the time and basically openly threatens um, everybody in the back, you know, while they're there. Oh, there's a lot of lights turned off. They're enemy of the people. Like, Jesus Christ. How long before one of these motherfuckers at one of your rallies follows them to the parking lot? Do you, you understand how dangerous it is? Oi. Anyways, here we go. So uh, this is this is about the bloodbath comment. Now, I mentioned this to some people, but I like I was kind of busy during it. And I think Johnny and I talked about it maybe even before the show that Trump's bloodbath thing was meant to be like he was saying it's going to be a blood bloodbath economically is the theory that he that's what he was talking. He was talking about car manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. But he intentionally left it vague ish. To to make it controversial in this regard like he just he could have clarified like he could have at one point gone bloodbath i mean financially like yeah that's what that that's where he was going but he liked the term saying bloodbath about mexico and america to kind of allow it to taint the conversation so the idea that it's a that he was it was an innocent statement is bullshit it it's also wrong to say he was talking about Mexicans are going to, it's going to be a bloodbath because of murder in America because he was literally using that as cover. He was weaving this in. He was trying to slip this in the way he wanted to. He wanted this comment to go viral the way it did, right? Okay, so let's be abundantly clear. Uh, clear. Now, Stank is very mad, I think, and I'm pretty sure this is what this is because it says bloodbath hoax. So I'm guessing that's what he jumps on. Let's go. The mainstream media proved to me over the weekend that a legitimate that you aren't a part of it. Mainstream being popular, trusted, on real networks, sure. Media and unbiased media, journalism in America. Mainstream media proved to me all of that is dead. So let's go through this piece by piece so you have the weapons you need. Yes, the the weapons to, you need to fight back against the terms like bloodbath in normal conversation. You know, the weapons you need to fight back against people misusing terms like bloodbath. To go back to your offices and be prepared to talk to your liberal lunatics that says President Trump. Your offices? I guess it can't be Thanksgiving all the Trump time. Trump is calling for a civil war. This is the weaponized, without context clip of President Trump's bloodbath comments. If I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. See? Now, what he's going to do is defend him for saying he said bloodbath in terms of our auto workers and our jobs. It's going to be a bloodbath in terms of jobs. No. What Trump was saying was it's going to be a bloodbath and the car shit's going to be the least of our worries. It's pretty clear from that, and even, I'm, we'll see if he shows the bigger version of it. That's exactly what he's talking about. What he means is, it's going to be a bloodbath. It, it, we won't even worry about jobs and factories and all the shit I was terrible at fixing for America. It's just going to be a bunch of Mexicans murdering everybody. That's that's what he's talking That's about. what they play. And then all the left-wing lunatics on Twitter and, and beyond start tweeting that out. Or X, whatever you want to call it. I, I call it Molly. Who jumps onto it? The mainstream media outlets. Look at these headlines, by the way. I mean, this was like right after NBC News. Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses the elections. CBS no News. In Ohio rally, Trump says there'll be a bloodbath if he loses the election. He did. Rolling Stone. Trump says there will be a bloodbath. Do you see what happens here? Yes, the, uh, there are a lot of headlines that you didn't even show the whole headline for, that mentioned that he said there would be a bloodbath if he doesn't get elected, which he did say. And in any of those areas where they might have done a, you know, a yeah, but in paragraph three to kind of explain it out a little bit, still, if you listen to what he said, 
he means there's going to be a bloodbath anyways because of the border and all that kind of shit, so jobs won't matter. But this asshole is going to go, that's not what he said at all. That's not what he said. He said bloodbath about in terms of the job market. Right. They use this by lies, lying by omission, by taking it all out of context. Oh, it's terrible. Well, that's one of the reasons, asshole, why I've, when I cover his rallies, I do the whole thing. So you guys can't accuse me of that. And by the way, he said shit like that all the time. There's a bunch of times where he hasn't said that, like, I mean, that asshole literally says, we're not going to have a country anymore. What the fuck do you think he means by that? Half the time he's talking about the Constitution will be destroyed or shredded, even though he's the only person who's brought up getting rid of it in the last 10 fucking years since, I don't know, fucking who? Reverend some young moon or some rando psycho person that ran in the 80s, maybe. I don't know. And the rest of the time he's talking about migrants. Folks, this is deceitful. Oh, terrible. It amounts to propaganda. It most certainly is fake news. That's what President Trump has dumped it. Now, here is my... That's what he's dumped it? He's dumped it like that? Or the, what, what, what kind of dumps are we talking about? Dumps. They call them dumps. Big, massive dumps. He's dumped it? Why would you dump it like that? Of context. Uh-huh. Folks, this is deceitful. Mm. It amounts to propaganda. It most certainly is fake news. That's what President Trump has dumped it. Now, here... Yeah, that's what he's dumped it. <laughs> what dumps. Is- they call them dumps. Big, massive dumps. You know, in all fairness, Stank knows Trump personally, and he knows that more than likely three times during that speech, he shit his pants. So that, it could, I mean, it's that's got to be weird when it's lingering in the back of your head all the time when you're you're talking about your friend who you know shits himself all the time, and you're like, I, don't mention that he poops. Dumps. And, they call them dumps. Big, massive dumps. Stop it! Here is my analysis of all of this great that's what i've been waiting for haven't you been waiting for it give it to us stank it will most certainly backfire on the mainstream media thankfully why asshole let me tell you a little something about trump you should know that if at some point there was a, a moment where he could get in an interview and go i said bloodbath and i meant this in an interview and they should face repercussions they should be ashamed of themselves and this is terrible that they would take that when i was talking about an economic number i was clearly saying it and they would ruin my uh, they, they would they, the way they would try to uh, i don't know intimidate or scare the public into not voting for me because of this out of context thing even if there was a moment where he managed to kind of shoehorn this bullshit into an interview in the same fucking interview he would just He'd call human, like, human beings vermin and say the poisoning, the blood of our country shit again. And he would, like, all but fillet Vladimir Putin on camera. It, there's no way this asshole can fix anything because he'll fuck it up in the same 10 minutes. Conservatives jumped into action yesterday. Even I did an emergency podcast. <laughs> did you? You do realize, um, say what you will about me as a Bi- a proud Biden voter, and I sure as fuck am, uh, at no point do I have to do an emergency podcast to cover his ass over something. <laughs> emergency podcast. <laughs> oh. Good for you. Good, good, good. I'm glad you... What, you're in the middle of dinner with your family and you're like, fuck this fam, the bat signal's up. It's it, the stank signal is in the air. Okay, fucking Mike. Get, all right, get a new graphic up. <laughs> Give me a good thumbnail, Charlie. Let's roll this out. Okay, people are attacking Donald Trump because he said bloodbath and he meant it in a way that was only close and marginal to the th- welcome to the Stankville podcast. On this, to start spreading the word about the bloodbath hoax. Now, let me play for you. The entire clip, so you. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna help you much. You hear it. This is him talking about. By the way, why would you have to do? Wouldn't his own people, most of the people who watch Stank or listen to his shit, they don't give a fuck. Half of, I would, I would say, the, bullshit. Half, 
99% of the people who watch this asshole show or watch Trump himself, you know, or that, or both, uh, do think it will be a bloodbath. Know exactly what the fuck he's talking about and don't care. The economic ramifications. What do you think? You're, uh, we, like, quick, I need to do an emergency podcast for all the uh, sorority moms in the, the suburbs who will misunderstand. Of China and electric cars and Joe Biden's environmental policies. Oh, okay. You know, Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34% of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico. Gee, why would they even do that unless there was a loophole in the USMCA that you negotiated that would allow them to sell cars into North America, um, you know, getting in under the radar of the USMCA? Gee, it's almost as if uh, some kind of, like, I don't know, China-friendly dumbass negotiated that thing. It's weird. Mexico and think, they think. Did he say Mexico? Our country, think of it, went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now. We're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Right. That'll be the least of it. The whole car shit I was just talking about is nothing compared to the fact that Mexicans are going to fucking murder us all. That's exactly what he was talking about. Don't look, don't. Eh, see, I showed you the clip. He He's talking about electric cars and China and all that stuff. And then at the end, when he could have been making a, an economic message and saying, that's absolutely not, and just kept his fucking mouth shut and rolled on to the next talking point, he throws in this, there's going to be a bloodbath and that's the least of it, meaning I'm talking about insane people coming across the border. Now you tell me, folks, if you're intellectually honest, what is President Trump talking about? You think He's talking about Mexicans and migrants and people coming across from insane asylums and all the shit he was talking to earlier, which is in a greater context of the entire speech, which is something he mentions all the fucking time. That's what he's talking about. That's what the bloodbath is about. The bloodbath is that. It's not even about the fucking Civil War part of it. He means fucking people coming across the southern border to murder us all. That's what he means. And the fucking electric cars, blah, blah, blah. That's nothing. He's talking about a civil war. Republicans taking the streets, shooting Democrats, hanging them. No, he's talking about migrants, motherfucker. Come on. Of course not. He's talking about a bloodbath that even Webster's Dictionary describes as one definition of a bloodbath is a devastating economic event. <laughs> well, I think bloodbath would be contextual to whatever you were talking about, you know. You know, like uh, I was shaving in the tub, which is always a mistake, and it was a bloodbath. No, um, it's a <laughs> like I it's like saying you lost your shirt on something. You could attach it to anything. That's what he's talking about there. No, it's not what he's talking about there. No, he's not. He's talking about the wor there's way worse shit coming from Mexico than Chinese cars. That's what he meant. But that's not what the mainstream media did because they're so afraid of this man. Why would they do that? It couldn't be because his followers fired guns at the Capitol when they tried to take it or, or built fucking gallows. They can't use the truth. They've got to lie, lying by omission, as I said, by not telling the context. Not telling the context? Why don't you play the rest of it where it goes on and on about migrants? Because that, that would contextualize it some, wouldn't you think? Watch them in action. A major party candidate is saying, you elect me, there's going to be dictatorship, bloodbath. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not reelected in November. When the former president says that there's going to be a bloodbath, what after the election if he does not win it's going to be a bloodbath for the country 
that will be the least of it. Are any of those people being intellectually honest? Uh, are you showing their entire clips? Are you being intellectually honest with the entirety of their conversation? And, and that the majority of those conversations actually spoke to listening to the man as a whole, not to one particular point in the speech. And if you do, you know that when he said it's going to be a bloodbath, we don't get elected, and that'll be the least of it, he means the economic shit doesn't matter. This is actual bloodbath. That's what he fucking means. One said, he said there's going to be a dictatorship. Yes, he said it. Sean Hannity tried to salvage it, you dumb motherfucker. He, I'm going to be a dictator for what day? Bullshit. You hear that out of President Trump words? Of course not. I beg did you hear that out of President Trump words? Hold on. Did, did I hear that out of President Trump words? Are any of those people being intellectually honest? One said, he said there's going to be a dictatorship. Did you hear that out of President Trump words? Of course not. All of them are also, fake. Like, this, is, this reminds me of like fucking, uh, where was it? Uh, Pat Gray, I think the other day, who didn't, like didn't know that you know one of Trump's quotes it was really obvious um I'm blitzing on which one it was but it was like one of the ones that they should obviously fucking know um let's see yeah Trump I won't be a dictator except for day one I don't even know I don't even have to share it with you fucking guys you know this is just dumb Jesus Christ do you watch this motherfucker he's your guy news devious deceitful propagandists that only work for the democrat party sir <laughs> especially that one yeah yeah that's the worst you know what i mean it's kind of like you know fox works for democrats the way uh, alex jones works for the illuminati certainly they don't work for us it is our challenge well who pounced into action right after this only the heroes nancy pelosi did watch oh. nancy pelosi push the bloodbath hoax because he's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? There's something wrong here. How um, respectful I am of the American people and their goodness. But how much more do they have to see from him to understand that this isn't what our country is about? Praising Hitler. By the way, uh, which he did. Why'd you cut off when he started praising Hitler? You got a problem with praising Hitler? Please tell me, he goes, uh, where did that ever happen? No, she goes on to list a whole bother, whole group of lies about praising Hitler, Russia, uh -huh. delusion hoax, all this kind of nonsense. It's not nonsense. I, I mean, at base, for fuck's sake, he did. His own wife said he had a copy, a copy of Hitler's speeches by his bedside. She is just as deceitful. She talks about... The American people are good people. She's not one of them, folks, at all. Well, she's an American person. I think, I think you kind of have to be to be a speaker, don't you? You have to be a citizen, pretty sure. She is supposed to be an elected leader in this country. She is actually an elected leader in this country. Not even supposed to be. She, she has been for quite some time. And yet she pushes the lies as well. But you know what she's doing? She's engaging in a tactic. Oh, dear. Not, not a tactic. It's a political game. It's warfare. Oh, what? So, so you're saying someone says something about someone else that isn't true and uses it, uh, it weaponizes that language against them to get them, you know, to, to vilify them like Crooked Hillary or some, you know, or Little Marco or any of that shit or, or you know, lying about Democrats killing babies after they're born. Or something. You mean that on that level or? She knows it. The Democrats never play fair. In Suck it up, Buttercup. What the fuck are you talking about? Never play fair. In fact, they have a, a word for this, a name for this. The wrap-up smear campaign. Oh, that's a word? Wrap-up smear campaign? It seems like a couple of words. It, 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 hold on. Run that by me again? She knows it. The Democrats never play fair. In fact, they have a, a word for this, a name for this. Mm. The wrap-up smear campaign. The wrap-up smear campaign. 
I, I honestly got, yeah, Susan, I've never heard of this. Chat room, <laughs> that's your new band name, Water and After. All right, chat room. Uh, anybody ever heard of the wrap up smear campaign? The what? Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Let's see. Uh, wrap up smear campaign. Uh, admit Democrats use a tactic called the wrap up smear. Just okay, fact check. Um, campaign called the technique against oh, so that would be that what they someone calls it the technique used against Justice Brett Kavanaugh. A version of the clip was shared in hyper okay, so this is this is what he's referring to. It's not the wrap up smear campaign, it's just called a wrap up smear. This is hold on one second. This would be what he's talking about. It's on Snopes. Did Nancy Pelosi admit Democrats use a tactic called the wrap-up smear? Unreliable sources claim Pelosi admitted on video that Democrats use it, such a tactic. But in reality, she ascribed it to Republicans. What do you know? Uh, what a shock. Uh, claim. In a C-SPAN video, U.S. House Minority Leader um, Nancy Pelosi revealed that Democrats use a smear, a political smear tactic she called the wrap-up smear. Miscaptioned. It was a... President Trump's second nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh, was confirmed by the Senate in October 2018 after a contentious hearing. Uh, Kavanaugh's accuser, Christine Blasey Ford, testified under oath she had been sex he had sexually assaulted her party in 82, an accusation the nominee uh, vehemently denied. All along, partisan supporters of Kavanaugh have portrayed Dr. Ford as a dupe at best in an alleged conspiracy by Democrats to derail any, a nomination by smearing his reputation. The day Kavanaugh was confirmed, a video clip began making rounds. They could allegedly be heard revealing the Democratic Party's template for such attacks, a tactic she called the wrap-up smear. A version of the clip also appeared on hyperpartisan websites such as InfoWars, where it uh, accompanied an article saying that Pelosi's description was eerily similar to what we saw happen to Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Um, this we call the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods um, and all the rest, and then you merchandise it, Pelosi said at a press conference last year. Oh, yeah, so she said it. Uh, was it a hot mic? And then you write it, and then they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that it is this, 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 and this. So they have that validation, the press report, the smear. And then it's called uh, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear we made. That sounds eerily similar to what they, the clips are authentic in respect to that they were extracted from an actual C-SPAN video of Pelosi's press briefing on 27, uh, 20, in 2017, but seriously misleading in the respect that they were trimmed in such a way to omit her original context. Ah, oh, stank, man. You can't. You can't, in your, Democrats are fucking with your context thing. Fuck with the context, dude. As a longer clip and transcript uh, clearly show, Pelosi was calling out Republicans for conducting wrap-up smear campaigns, not touting the phenomenon as a go-to strategy for de uh, Democrats. Because basically, at the end of the day, that's what people are interested in, their representatives and what their representative is doing for their district. Republicans are afraid of that contrast in a race because they're going to go there to be involved in trickle-down economics, shutting down hospitals, respite. So they don't want to see that contrast. Uh, so they focus on something else. It's a diversionary tactic. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You demonize and then you, we call it the wrap-up smear. You want to talk about politics? It's called the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it, you write it, and then... They'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, this, and this. So they have the validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called a wrap-up smear. Now, I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. It's a tactic, it's a, and it's self-evident. She's talking about Republicans doing this. In fact, this wasn't the first time she brought up the term wrap-up smear, specifically to describe Republican political tactics. In March 6, 2017, exchange between Pelosi and CNN news anchor Jake Tapper, she claimed President Trump used such a smear tactic against former President Barack Obama. Well, the president, you know, is the uh, deflector in chief, anything to change the subject from where the heat is. And on one, he's engaged in intelligence, a member of the Gang of Eight for a long time. I can tell you it's just ridiculous for the president, President Trump, to say that o President Obama would never order any wiretap of an American citizen, any, would ever order any wiretap of an American citizen, any president. That's just not, we don't do that. And so this is, it's called a wrap-up smear. You make up something, then you have the press write about it, and then you say everybody's writing about this charge. Um... It's a tool of authoritarian just to have you uh, always be talking about what you want them to be talking about. Rather than Russia, we're talking about, did uh, President Obama do thus and so? We're unable to find any instance of Pelosi stating or advocating that, pre that Democrats use such a tactic. Well, stank, I gotta say, man. I, I don't mean to uh, curb stomp your report here, buddy, but... How do I know what the wrap-up smear campaign is exactly? 
because Republicans engage in it all the time, and she was pointing what out. What they did to President Trump yesterday, I know this because Nancy Pelosi spelled it out a couple of years ago. Listen to her in her own words describe exactly. Oh, wait. Are you going to, she's describing in her own words exactly what you just did? Exactly what she pushed yesterday. We call it the wrap-up smear. If you want to talk politics, you call it the wrap-up smear. You smear somebody with falsehoods and all the rest, and then you merchandise it. And then you write it, and they'll say, see, it's reported in the press that this, 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 and this. Uh -huh. So they have that validation that the press reported the smear, and then it's called the wrap-up smear. Now I'm going to merchandise the press's report on the smear that we made. And it's, it's a tactic. And it's 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 self evident. Uh huh. It's self evident that Trump is doing it. Yeah. I see how she said it. it. It's a tactic. You know, it's interesting because she pulled back the curtain. It most certainly is a tra tactic. The wrap up smear. Notice she says you you smear somebody with falsehoods. That's what this whole idea of President Trump calling for some kind of a civil war bloodbath. It's false. Oh, hold on. Now, I can understand why. Nancy Pelosi, who was present on January 6th, would hear bloodbath coming from this dickhead and go, oh, fuck, man. She's trying to get, he's trying to get his people riled up and attack us again. Holy shit. That's how she's going to hear it. Other folks that are listening very carefully to the shit he talks about the border are going to hear it's about, you know, migrants coming across the border, the bloodbath of migrants coming across the border, which I think is actually what he's saying. And then there are going to be some people who think he, because he's kind of dry, he's trying to drive his supporters to attack again, that it's going to be a civil war kind of thing. But, you know, Republicans killing Democrats and the like. Um, I get how she heard it that way. I, I think she misheard it in that regard, but I don't think she's just redirecting it because I got news for you. It's just as valuable to her message if she portrayed it the way I'm talking about it that was right. I think she genuinely said that's how she hears it. Good. She said you merchandise. You know who merchandised it? Nancy Pelosi did. She put it out there for all the world to see. And then what happened? The mainstream media grabbed it. They wrote about it. And then the politicians come back in and they push out all those articles that I told you. They merchandise it. They legitimize it. Legitimize a bogus falsehood story. Um, which, by the way, required this dickhead and his network and I guess whatever podcasting platform he's on, to do emergency reports doing damage control for Donald Trump. That, by the way, if you sat down Donald Trump and asked him, do you mean there'd be a, like a bloodbath of like migrants coming across the border if, they, if these people get there? He'll go, absolutely. He would absolutely do double down on that. This is what you get from Democrats, folks. You want, you want to elect Biden back in? You're going to get more of the wrap-up smear from Republicans. What the fuck do you think the Hunter Biden bullshit is? You don't you don't actually think there's a laptop, do you? You know you don't actually think that's a real laptop, right? Now they didn't do it just once to President Trump over the weekend from that Daytona rally. Or Day <laughs> and and you know what's weird is that uh, I don't even know how they managed to do it because Donald Trump has all the best words. So how in the fuck do people ever manage to read him out of context? It's like his, I gotta say, it's like his silly, um, his perfect calls. You know what I mean? He seems to have all these perfect calls that are incredibly easy to impeach him with. If it was a, per I mean, if it was a really good call, you could probably squeeze a little bit of shit out of it and, and, and ma manipulate it. But if it was a perfect call, and again, the only person who says a perfect call is somebody who's trying to say something criminal and they know legally they managed not to say any of the buzzwords. I said the whole, I threatened him without actually verbalizing the threat directly. It was perfect. That's the only way you ever talk about a perfect fucking call. Ever. Yeah, who does have, the, does Kathleen have the laptop right now? Who has the laptop currently? Because I, I was looking for it this weekend, and I knew I had it for a little while, but then I got busy, and it just appeared. But, I mean, how do you, how does this motherfucker end up getting, you know, misquoted like he's worried about, or his words used against him, if he has the best words? I know words, I have the best words. And an ominous, really an, an ominous, criminal, look, look, wait. Okay. Satan rally. 
They did it twice. Oh, terrible. There's this idea that he called migrants not human. They're not people or animals. Uh huh. Well, he said that about some migrants, but not just any migrants. He said that about prisoners that were being let out of Venezuela in jails and which he says is the entirety of the people crossing the border. He has said he's saying all the same shit he said in 2016. He's saying all the same shit, except the, and some I assume are good people. That, he's totally, oh, okay, Paula's got it. Okay, thank you, Paula. Yeah, no, just hang on to it. I have, I got too many, uh, I, I got a lot, of, I got a lot of cleaning up around here to do. I even had to order a new shelf. Um, oh, by the way, um, I have a, a special treat for you guys on uh, Friday morning. Uh, I think Tara's going to be our guest. I got to make sure. Uh, I don't want to screw with Andrea, who's doing uh, the yeoman's work of trying to organize my silly little guests. Um, um, excellent. Um, but uh, I think Tara can be on our second hour on Friday. And then uh, Rob Glenn's going to be with us on on for Friday AI on the first hour because there's so much shit going on tech-wise. Like, I swear to God, in a year... All of this stuff, after Biden gets reelected, by the way, um, all of this stuff is going to be the least of our fucking worries. The world is going to get so crazy so fast, and already is, and I want you guys to be ahead of it. I want you to be ahead of the curve so you're comfortable when this happens. And so Rob's super bright and wonderful, and he's a lovely guy, and he's, he's from Chicago, so I feel good about that in general. Um, and has been a great supporter of the show over the years, too. So... I, w I wanted to have him on to talk about that stuff to maybe help me not be so wonky in my talk about this stuff because there's so many changes happening so fast. We're going to address that. And uh, also, I have a, a, a show and tell at the end of the show, so stick around. Also, like and subscribe and, and thing that I forget to say. All right, here we go. Coming here, an MS-13 gang members, those are the people that he said are not human beings. Yeah, Trump does basically the opposite of what Hamas is doing right now. According to Hamas... There are no Hamas fighters being killed. Everyone who's been killed, half of them are kids, the other half are women, um, and innocent old men or something. But they've not, they haven't lost a single soldier. Nobody who has died has been in the process of fighting, right? So uh, Hamas does this whole story. Nobody who gets killed is an actual Hamas militant fighter or whatever. Trump is doing the exact opposite. Everybody who comes across the border is an, is an invading force is an invader, not somebody seeking asylum, by the way, from countries that many of them socialist countries and they want to come to a capitalist country because they feel safer and better about it, which you'd think he'd support in some ways, which he did actually because he signed off on Venezuelans coming to the country, right? That was the whole thing. And then a bunch of them come here. One of them was the guy who uh, killed the woman in Georgia that everybody's talking about. He's a Venezuelan. He was here on that special grant that started under Trump and was continued under Biden because people were fleeing Venezuela because of tar or something um but trump is trump is saying that everybody who comes across the border is a terrorist gang member from an insane asylum these are not people but this is the without context soundbite you got from the mainstream media if you call them people i don't know if you call them people in some cases they're not people in my opinion but i'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say they say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity I've seen the humanity, and these humanity, these are bad, these are animals, okay? He's talking about MS-13 gang members. He's Why didn't you show him talking about MS-13 gang members? Why didn't he say that? Why didn't you, ba you got time? It's your fucking show, stank. Back the fucking clip up, buddy. Right? Show the top part where he's talking about MS-13. Make him make that distinction, you dumb motherfucker. And he doesn't. He doesn't. He, the rest of the time he's talking about, like, we're going to have huge... Anybody, these people are... There's terrorists coming across the border and they're going to be terrible. That's what the bloodbath shit is about. He's talking about these same fucking people. Same shit. Talk about the worst Venezuela and El Salvador have to offer. That the leaders of those countries are literally letting the prisoners out and sending them to America. Which is nonsense. Has anybody... Look. All right. Fucking hell. Uh, okay. Um, let 
They're, they're letting him out of jail, are they? Uh, hold on. Here's a... This is New York Times. Hold on. Yeah, screw you out of here. Quit. Get out of here. Joe Galarza. Um... Yeah, here you go. So, I want to see if they got the pictures of the dudes in the jails. Um, yeah, they don't have it in this article. Um, real quick, uh, El, uh, El Salvador gang prison. Yeah, that was, uh, okay. Yeah, here you go. Uh, shit. So, real quick. Um, there you go. So here's El Salvador is not letting their guys out of jail. This is what's going on in El Salvador. See these dudes, all of them head tattoos, face tattoos, right? Like all these guys are part of like violent gangs, drug gangs, particularly. And they're not letting any of these motherfuckers out. That's the whole story. It's so odd, but it's the exact opposite of of what he's saying. The the argument is they're locking up too many people. Then if you were even tacitly involved in one of these gangs, they're locking you up. And they're and they they're running them around and they're fucking un, like they're bussing them the fucking a fleet of buses take the 2000 suspected gang members to the new prison. Suspected. You don't even have to actually be I mean, look, most of these guys have the fucking gang numbers tattooed on their chest so like the minute you know who they're with have them have it on their fucking face so like of course they're part of the gang suspected go you know it's not like they caught them hanging out like they look like this that's what i'm talking about right prisoners were stripped down to white shorts with their heads shaved many had gang tattoos yeah many all of them these dudes had many of them you could say many of them had gang face tattoos holy shit like have you seen any of this stuff um there's tons of it there was a report, I want to say, is it New York Times? Yeah. So this is New York Times. Um, New York Tam Times did an article. They're adorable. El Salvador decimated its ruthless gangs, but at what cost? Well, obviously no cost because they're just putting them on buses and sending them to the United States. <laughs> That's clearly what's happening, according to Stank. I mean, but this is, of course, mainstream media, so what the fuck do we know? In the years since El Salvador declared a state of emergency, the government has delivered a stunning blow to the gangs that were once the ultimate authority in much of the country. Uh, when the MS-13 ran the neighborhood of La Margaritas, uh, one of its strongholds in El Salvador, there were rules you had to follow to stay alive. You couldn't wear the number eight because it was associated with the rival 18th Street Gang. You couldn't wear the brand of sneakers the gangsters wore. You could not, under any circumstances, call the police. Now, let me guess. They, these folks, uh, in the, uh, Natalie uh, Kitroev uh, and uh, the people who are writing this for the New York Times and the editor, are going to write this as, some of the stuff that the El Salvador government did was very undemocratic in their process. Y y y yes, but only to the gang members. The other people had no democratic rights, even though technically in terms of the government, they did because the gangs ran everything. Now, watch, check this out. Uh, people couldn't complain to the police because of what the boys would say. Uh, they became the authority in this system. So the gangs were running stuff. Nobody had any rights at all. And if they wanted to kill you, they would. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Sandra Elizabeth Ingles at her juice stand, not far from her home in La, Las Margaritas, Margaritas, she said gang members were once the authority in the town. Lovely lady and her juice stand and the kids hanging around or whatever. Um, th this is probably preferable, I would guess, um, to uh, the situation where this dude was running the neighborhood. This lady has a juice stand or this dude is in jail. These are your choices. Um, uh, the neighborhood of uh, La Campanera in the municipality of uh, Soyapango near El Salvador's capital, the neighborhood was once controlled by the 18th Street Gang. And now there's a kid in the swing. Just say it. it it's this or it's this. These are your choices. You have this. In El Salvador, you have this or you have this. Now, who the fuck thinks that El Salvador would take these motherfuckers and drive them to their the edge of their territory, to the border of El Salvador, and said, bye, go to America, don't come back. You think they would listen? 
You think they're not going to turn right around and just kill whoever turned them in or kill the cops in the area or some shit? What the fuck is going to keep them out? It's nuts. So, yeah, the kid's cute. <laughs> um, but this motherfucker thinks that these guys, El Salvador is going to let them out and trust them to leave. And that they're, these guys are coming to the border and we can't spot their MS-13 face tattoos. Jesus Christ. He said he knows these leaders. He knows what they're up to. He knows what they're up to. Well, he knows what they're up to. Are they up to things? Yes. For to have. They are. He knows what they are up to. But they don't play that for you, do they? He says that all the time. He's talking out of his ass. Why would they? Here is the entire clip of what he said about that. Cool. But I got to know all these people. They're very smart, very streetwise. And... Yes, and it's not very smart or very streetwise to take 3,000 gang members and just release them into the country next door and say, walk to America or else, because they're not going to listen. They're going to come back and fucking kill you. I would do the same thing if I had prisons that were teeming with MS-13 and all sorts of people that they've got to take care of. For you do. You do, you dumb motherfucker. I don't know what's uh, American jails are like at least four federal penitentiaries, 40% prisons. I'm no, sorry, sorry, listen to me. 40% um, federal, 40% of federal prisoners are gang members. I can speak. I was, I was in airports all day yesterday. I'm sleepy. <laughs> but what you'll notice is I, I didn't try to pretend that I said it right and just move on because I'm a grown person. <laughs> as silly as I am. At least, uh, yeah, uh, furniture and future. The next 50 years, right? Young people, they're in jail for years. And if you call them people, I don't know if you call them people. In some cases, they're not people, in my opinion. But I'm not allowed to say that because the radical left says that's a terrible thing to say. They well, you know, uh, we learned a very valuable lesson from Kirk before, uh, you know, he, his heart was changed about the Klingons. Initially, they're animal spark. Uh, it was an, it was a growth arc. We all watched. They killed my son, you know. And if he can grow, can't we all? You say you have to vote against him because did you hear what he said about humanity? I've seen the humanity and these humanity, these are bad. These are animals, okay? I've seen the humanities and these humanities. These and we have to stop it. We can't have another lake in. Can't have another lake in Riley. A poor nursing student murdered the hands of an animal. Who got in on a special dispensation that was written up during the Trump administration that allowed Venezuelans to get to the front of the line because they were escaping socialism and Trump has a hard on about socialism. Of an well, not much of one, obviously. It's more like a, a, a sad simile. An unhuman being who came here that had been arrested more times than I can count. Really? You can't count to six? Animals. Actually, you know what? Touche. He probably can't. Thugs. Violent goons. You want them roaming the streets now? No. <laughs> that was the end of it? He was just getting to his point. Now, I gotta say, the people at RAV hate Stank. Look at this. Now, what a shitty way to end your show. That had been arrested more times than I can count. Not me doing this. Animals. Thugs. Violent goons. You want them roaming the streets now? Now, <laughs> somebody at, at Stankfeld, like at Real America's Voice, like, okay, enough, enough. I, he's not saying anything. I don't know what the fuck. We're wasting a lot of bandwidth with this asshole's clips. I just think it's a mistake. I mean, did you get what he was saying? I mean, he, honestly, I think like he dug the hole deeper. It's a waste of fucking time. And I, I honestly, I want to cut the clip off just because I'm, I'm tired of looking at his fucking. Who framed Roger Rabbit villain head? Um, <laughs> the dip! So, yeah. So, Stank was uh, very upset that apparently El Salvador is taking all these guys and has, uh, using quantum field theory, has allowed them to be in jail and here at the same time. Yes, end emergency podcast. That's right. 
All right. So uh, thank you, chat. Uh, how you doing? Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show. It's House Parks Mega Worldwide. All right. Now, um, obviously, um, can I, I, I caught something live. Now, usually in this situation, our dear friend, <laughs> great edits over there. <laughs> I know CSL. It's so weird. I mean, I'm sure, uh, can't stop lying. You have a hard time sometimes finding the cutoff point in my rambles. Bless your heart. Mwah. But like, they just don't seem to give a shit. I got to say <laughs> like that. They're fucking just stop it. Stop. I'm done at times. All right, fine. All right. I tried to give you a tight ending on the last one, right? Did you notice then? I felt almost a personal responsibility. To... I'm going to try. Do Everybody remind me at the end of when I'm doing a clip to do a hard out of something before I move on to the next one so it makes it easier for Can't Stop Lying to figure out when the fuck I'm done talking. <laughs> and the answer is never. Never. <laughs> 